Uh, good evening to all the learners and the academic counselor, Ms. Uh, uh, Monica. I hope uh, you all enjoyed these two days, previous two days, academic counseling sessions of the management program. I think uh, today is the third session. We are uploading every day uh, recorded videos into our RC Vishakapatnam YouTube channel. Uh, any your friends, anybody missed the sessions and they can also view uh, and listen to these same sessions uh, by visiting our RC Vishakapatnam YouTube channel. Uh, with these words, I request uh, Miss Manisha to take the uh, session. I hope you are also enjoying the teaching of the IGNO courses. Yes, sir. Uh, this is the heterogeneous group where uh, uh, we are having the uh, different age um, learners and the different profession uh, people are there. Um, after this, uh, we will also um, discuss more on continuation of your support to the other courses as well as the uh, management related courses. Okay, thank you. Please go ahead. Thank you, sir. Thank you for this wonderful opportunity. I'm feeling very happy to mingle with this uh, IGNU, sir. Thanks a lot, sir. Yeah, please go ahead. Okay, sir. Thank you, sir. Good afternoon, dear students. Yesterday, we have completed up to four units. Today, we'll continue with fifth unit, okay? Is everyone able to see the screen? Please let me know. OK, thank you. Now we'll start the session, OK? OK, dear students, up to yesterday, we have completed four units in, in your first subject, MMPC 001, OK? Now we'll start with the fifth unit, organizing. Organize, you all are know that the organizing is the second function of the management, okay? Previously, we have discussed about organizing. Organizing is the management functions that follows the after planning. And the organizing also involves the assignment of tasks to each and every individual in any organization, okay? And these organizing also grouping of tasks into various departments. And it will also assign the authority with adequate responsibility. And the organizing will allocate the resources to each and every employees. And it will use the resources from employees to achieve common goals in the organization. And we'll start with the first topic in organizing, okay? The first topic in the organization, organizing is the concept of organizing and analyzing work. Organizing work is different and analyzing work is different. Okay. What is organizing work? Organizing work refers to the process of arranging tasks, responsibilities, and resources within an organization. For what? For to achieve specific objectives of the organization. Okay. It also involves very creative systematic framework and, and ensures very clarity 
in accountability and performance. Also, organizing en encompasses various elements, including these elements, which we have seen in the screen. Okay. First one is division, division of labor. What is division of labor? Assigning the tasks, tasks and responsibilities to every individual means distributing the tasks or work to each and every employee in organization is division of labor. Okay. They will assign the tasks according to their skills and expertise. For each and every employee in organization can get work according to their skills. That is nothing but division of labor. And hierarchy and structure. The second one is hierarchy and structure. We have discussed about hierarchy in yesterday's class. Hierarchy means information passes from top to down and down to top. From different types of levels. Okay. And these organizing will establish the hierarchy in every organization. Okay. There is a, there is a hierarchy. The system of hierarchy is there. This hierarchy is implemented and organizing, organized by this organizing. Okay. And it defines reporting relationships and lines of authority. For this purpose, Hierarchy and structure is encompasses element of the organizing work. Okay. And the third one is resource allocation. Allocating resources such as like uh, time, budget and materials to support work activities for each and every company. For, for working purpose, they need some resources such as materials. So these all are allocated and arranged, arranged by these organizing. Okay. This is nothing but resource allocation. And coming to last one, workflow design. What is workflow design? The organizing is a continuous process in any organization. How can the work flows continuously with uh, to flow uh, to flow of work continuously? It needs a design designing these designing is organized by these organizing in these organizing function. OK. And here it gives sequences of tasks and minimize bottlenecks. In this workflow design, this is the all this design. This designing is prepared by organizing. Okay, so that we have completed organizing work. What is organizing work? There are it encompasses with four elements. First one is division of labor, and second one is hierarchy and structure. Third one is resource allocation, and fourth one is workflow design. Coming to analyzing of work. We have organized the work. Already we have organized the work in first step. Okay. What we need to do now? We need to analyze it, analyze the work which we have organized previously. We have implemented work. And we have executed those work. We need to know how this work is performing. For that purpose, we have to Analyze the work compulsory in every organization. Okay. And also, we can say in another words, analyzing work is the process of examining tasks and process to gain insights into their efficiency. It is very potential for improvement. Okay. And these analyzing work involves a detailed assessment of how work is currently performed in the organization. And it will identify the strengths, weakness, and making data-driven decisions to enhance performance. And these analyzing work also include some components 
which is process mapping, performance metrics, benchmarking, and continuous improvement. Coming to first one, first one is process mapping. What is process mapping? It creates in these element or component, it creates visual representation of workflows in organization to identify the inefficiencies and areas. The areas which are struggling with the inefficiencies, they will identify through visual representations and it is optimized. This process is called process mapping. Okay. And the second one is, and this is the one of the component that we can find, we can analyze our work in organization. And second one is performance matrix. Establishing key performance indicators. Yesterday I have said about key performance indicators, right? These key performance indicators is Use it to measure the effectiveness, effectiveness of work process, which is going, going on currently. It will indicate and we can calculate work effectiveness with these KPIs. And third one is benchmarking. Benchmarking is means if for each and every organization, there will be some standards and um, some standards are there. Okay. What uh, at currently which working is going on, what is actual performance of working and what is the standard performance of working, actual standard performance of working in organization. But comparing these actual performance with the standards, uh, standards of the organization is nothing but benchmarking. This is also a one type of uh, one component in analyzing work. Okay. Continuous improvement, fourth one, last one. Implementing changes and enhancements based on data and feedback to continually refine work processes. Yes, in a in work in workflow, they need some we need some changes and enhancements. Who can we know that by taking feedback and by taking data? To refine work processes continuously, right? For that purpose, continuous improvements also needed. It is also a one of the component in analyzing work. So that will go to next topic. Okay. Hope everyone is understand this topic. And next one is different approaches to organizing and analyzing work. Just now we have discussed about how to organize the work and how to analyze the work. Okay. To organize and analyze this work, there are different approaches are there in organizing. What are they? And first one is coming to first one. It is functional approach. And what is functional approach? Functional approach in the organization is a common approach in any organizing work. Okay. It is very common approach. Here, where tasks and responsibilities are grouped by specific functions or departments within the organization. Say, for example, like uh, there may be a separate departments for finance, marketing, production, human resource. These approach allows for specialization and expertise within each department and promoting efficiency and in the depth knowledge. This is nothing but functional approach. Coming to second one, it is a divisional approach. For what purpose these divisional approaches and what is what does it means in the divisional approach? It will organize this work based on divisions or business units. Often they organize it around products, geographical locations, customer segments, 
these division approaches will keep in mind these will assign works by including these components like uh, all the we each division operates as a semi autonomous unit okay with its own resource and decision making authority and also this division approach facilitates a focus on specific market segments like and it also encourages flexibility responsiveness to local market conditions like uh, for example division approach means uh, uh, just imagine that there is a big company like a departmental store okay instead of having one big team managing everything they split into smaller teams okay instead of being a big team in store departmental store they have separated or splitted into smaller teams like having one team for clothes and another for electronics and another team for home goods okay each team focuses on their particular area to make sure everything is running smoothly or not in simple words you can understand very easily with this example okay that is called divisional approach in organizing okay next we can next third one is mat matrix approach the matrix approach combines elements of both functional and divisional structures okay it combines both functional and divisional structures and also in a matrix individual report to both a functional manager and a project or product manager based on the project they are working on these approaches very common in complex organizations and also where cross functional collaborations in crucial okay oh okay let us assume that uh, uh, imagine you are working on a project at school with classmates from different subjects okay in a matrix approach instead of just one teacher leading the project you might have teachers from different subjects like math science and art all working together with you each teacher brings their expertise to the table right every individual have the different types of experiences right everyone brings their experiences to the table for students same as like making the project richer and more well rounded this matrix approach will be used a lot okay and the fourth approach process oriented approach this process oriented approach organizes work around the specific business processes rather than functions or divisions and also this approach emphasizes the flow of work across various departments for what to achieve a specific income a uh, sorry outcome okay and also these process oriented approach mainly focuses on streamlining and improving end to end processes to get efficiency and customer satisfaction okay for example think a bakery in a process oriented approach the bakery focuses on perfecting each step of making a cake okay from mixing ingredients to baking to decorating items like decorating along from mixing item items to decorating cream gel so and so they pay close attention to the details of every stage to ensure that the final product turns out very delicious or not each and every time they pay attention to make it very delicious same as like 
this process oriented approach also insists step by step processes in organization okay and fifth one is network approach what is network approach the network organization is characterized by a highly decentralized structure means we have i have said that what is decentralization and de what is centralization centralization in centralization structure the delegate of authorities is not distributed to anyone only top management will manage everything decentralized structure means the powers the authority is distributed and it is distributed to different levels okay in network approach it is characterized by very highly decentralized structure where work is organized around networks of individuals or teams the, these networks can be internal or external maybe anything and this network approach will also collaborate on specific projects or initiatives and these also often associated with the gig economy and flexible it arranges the project based work arrangements okay use a simple examples like uh, to explain the network approach same you have uh, just imagine that you have a group of friends and each friend each each friendship connections represents a link in the network right you can analyze this network by studying how every individual every individual friend are connected to each other the strength of their connections and how information or influences flows through the network this approach helps us in understanding social dynamics identifying key players and predicting behaviors within the group okay so you can understand very easily i'm telling very simple examples okay like this network approach will be perform their duties coming to other one and final one it is a holacracy approach the holacracy is a relatively new organizational approach it, it is very new actually functional approach is very basic later this uh, we can say that holacracy approach is also a modern approach and it promotes the self management and autonomy in a holacratic organization work is organized around self governing teams or circles each circle has its roles and responsibilities and decisions are made collectively this approach is designed to foster innovation and agility okay but we can take uh, say for example same as before example like uh, imagine that we have a small bakery where it instead of having a traditional manager overseeing everything there are self organizing teams are there each team is responsible for a specific aspect of the bakery's operation one team handling baking another takes care of customer services and so on in this entire setup decisions about which recipes to bake how to organize the display or how to handle customer feedback are made collectively during regular team meetings okay these allows everyone to contribute ideas and take ownership of their roles and it's automatically resulting in a more flexible and responsive bakery operation okay so is everyone clear about topic so that i will go to another one is everyone clear okay hoping that everyone is clear about this topic we can go to another topic okay 
another topic is significance of work it is means importance of work improvement and measurements okay in this first one is to improve uh, sorry first one is enhanced efficiency in enhanced efficiency streamliner processes lead to increasing efficiency reduced team lead light sorry lead times and lower operational costs all these are occurs in the enhanced efficiency it is very important to enhance efficiency in any organization by uh, getting to by decreasing the operational cost each and everything okay and second one is improved quality the work improvement initiates often result in higher quality outputs right reducing errors and reworks all are very important to improve work improvements in organization okay improved work improved quality always attracts our customers and get more outputs and third one is resource optimization we always need efficient resource allocations that ensures that resources are utilized effectively by reducing wastes okay the resource optimization is one of the main significant to improve the work if it does not use the resources optimally how can we get profits we can't we need to reduce wastes for that resource optimization is very important aspect in organizing okay and fourth one is greater customer satisfaction s yes. of course if the customer satisfy if the cust customer is god for any organization there is no customer no organization no product nothing so that we need to meet the customer satisfactions improved processes can lead to better products and services that increasing customer satisfaction so that we need to improve our products according to the this modern era okay and another one is competitive advantage organization that continuously improve their work processes are more agile and competitive in the market okay so that competitive advantage also a very main significant in the organizing to improve organization another one is measuring work for performance measuring work performance always involves in quantifying the effectiveness and efficiency of work processes it provides data driven insights into how well operations are performing and whether they meet established standards or not in it there are they compare always they will measure what performance is going on there are some key aspects of measuring work and measuring working performance first one is key performance indicators kpis these key performance indicators will always identifying and tracking kpis that align with organizational objectives such as productivity cost effectiveness and customer satisfaction also okay it will always works to 
measure the all these productivity effectiveness and customer satisfaction by these kpis also we can measure the work performance and the second one is benchmarking just now i have said that comparing organizational performance is to industry standards or competitors to identify areas for improvement you say for example the industry standards are somewhat different what actually going is on different so that we need to improve to get more closer to industry standards it will find out those it will identify those particular areas for improvement that is nothing but benchmarking these benchmarking is used to measure the work performance and another one is data analysis analyzing data related to work processes to identify trends patterns and areas requiring attention which areas are requiring attention okay according to trends these data analysis will analyze the areas which are need to be improved okay next feedback mechanism feedback mechanism means collecting all the feedbacks from employees customers like uh, stakeholders and also they will assess work quantity and i identify more improvement improvement opportunities by assessing all of these people by taking feedback from them okay these feedback mechanism not only for employees okay also from customers each and every one who are related to organization and fifth one is regular assessment what is regular assessment means it's a continuous monitoring of evaluating work that processing to ensure going performance improvement it is continuously monitoring for what to evaluate for evaluating work processes to ensure that ongoing performance is improvement to for that purpose regular assessment are used and uh, is everyone clear anyone Okay, hoping that everyone is clear, and I am going to next topic. Another one is another topic is time and motion study. Okay, this is very interesting topic and very little topic. What is time and motion study? means the time and motion study means the study that determines the standard time taken to perform a job is known as study time means time study okay the study of movements like lifting putting objects sitting and changing positions etc all the all these things known as motion study the main aim of this study is to determine the standard time that taken to complete the task in time in time study okay and what is motion study in motion study it is determined to know to know and to improve the and to eliminate the wastage movements that are happening in the work okay and what is difference between those two there are three differences the main three key differences are there in time study and motion study and the first first one is meaning what is the time study meaning the time study is conducted to find out the standard time for performing a task and motion study means the motion study is conducted to find out total movements of every workers 
while they are performing the task okay say for example we are constructing the business i am i am constructing a uh, building it's a big building and uh, i need uh, i have recruited 10 sorry i have recruited 10 manpower to construct those business okay sorry to construct the building uh, and uh, i have i have said to those uh, 10 members 10 i mean 10 people to complete the business they keep on working and i have measuring the time so for example it takes completely 30 days to complete to complete the entire con construction the 30 days is the output of time study okay then what is motion study in motion study, I will observe the movements of the workers, whether the workers are performing good move, I mean, performing according to work or not. Is there wasting any time with wastage movements? This study is motion study, okay? And second one is purpose. Time, for, time study is for what purpose? The purpose of time study is to find out standard time to fix days. Work for the workers, okay? I have found out time. Totally it needs 30 days to complete, to construct a building with 10 employees. Next time what I will do? I know the time. And I have eliminated the movements, extra movements. Next time, definitely, I will give a time to workers, 10 workers. Next time, if I am constructing any building, means I will give 10 day, 30 days of time to 10 workers to complete a building. Okay. I have found out here standard time to complete that particular work. That is the main purpose of time study and motion study. The purpose of motion study is to Eliminate wasteful and unproductive or oh, sorry unproductive mo movements movements of workers to increase their efficiency level. Why I am eliminating these movements to decrease the time? Okay, these both are related to each other. And the third one is method of conducting. It is conducted, the time study is always conducted with the help of stopwatch. I will use here stopwatch to conduct time study. And in motion study, the motion study is conducted with the help of a movie camera, which keeps eye on workers, each and every eye on workers' movements, each and every workers' movements. Okay. If I feel the movement is waste. He's always roaming here and there. Then I will eliminate that particular movements. Okay. Hope everyone clear with this time and motion study. And the another topic is ergonomics. What is concept of ergonomics? Or as, what is ergonomics? Firstly, the ergonomics can roughly be defined as a study of people in their working environment. Okay. Is more specifically pronounced like economist and also ergonomist. Okay. It designs or modifies the work to fit the worker, not the other way around, okay? The goal is to eliminate discomfort and risk of injury due to work, okay? The main goal of ergonomics, what is main goal of ergonomics is to eliminate discomfort or risk. Risk of injury due to work, okay? So, 
in these ergonomics there are men versus machine ergonomics is there okay means human engineer groups generally include engineers psychologists sociologists mathematicians anthropologists physicians and especially from fields and the human and machine systems possess different characteristics and these ergonomics advocates to using these characteristics in a complementary manner while designing and implementing any production and mechanism operations so we will know the difference between these men excels in and machines excels in okay and firstly the men the men means the people the creator of these act also created humans okay a machine generally a machine is a device that is made of non living objects in due course what happens the men the men can instruct the machine to perform a tasks not in due course in pastly okay before earlier before the men will instruct to machine to perform a task or action with the help of applied forces or with a click of button later men invented the wheel and the wheel and axle during the 5th millennium b during the 5th millennium bc in meso meso to pasmia okay men invented machines for his convenience and comfort to save time to save lot of time men has invented machines few examples of everyday machines uh, are like uh, doorbell screw driver fan phone all these are invented by men the invention of the machine improved a lot and also it improved living standard of the men also and it growing dependency on the men is uh, so on Uh, now what is the position the machine growing dependency and overcoming the men weaker more weaker the harmful effects of the machines are damaging health and environment etc now machines are working more than humans in any organization right so now we'll get into the topic uh men versus machines what does men will do the men always detection of certain forms of very low energy levels the machines not like that the machine will, will monitor both men and machines machine excels the men all the men excels in always sensitivity to an extremely wide variety of stimuli the machine performs very routine repetitive or very precise operations when compared to men okay the men will always improving adopting flexible procedures but the machine the machine excels is not like that it doing many different things at one at a time the the men can perform only a single single thing at one time he can work only on single thing at uh, one time the, but the machine works at a time different works okay multiple of works it perform multiple of works and the men have ability to profit from experience and latest course of action 
but the machines have ability to repeat operations very rapidly continuously in the same way over a long period the men have ability also have ability to continue to perform even and overloaded also okay the machine excels in operating in environments which are hostile to men or beyond human tolerance okay and next we'll go to the another topic work space and architectural ergonomics okay what is this workspace and architectural ergonomics the these are the very crucial considerations in designing environment and to promote productivity comfort and well being okay and these architecturals involves in designing spaces that optimizing factors like lighting ventilation layout and furniture infrastructure that which are required for what for to minimize physical strain and support for various work activities okay and also this is used for efficient use of space proper desk and uh, chairs chair heights adequate lighting and noise noise reduction there are some key elements are there to enhance productivity and reduce the risk of musculoskeletal disorders okay what are the key elements first one is layout of optimization what is layout of optimizations the arranging of desks workstations and common areas should facilitate smooth improvement and interaction among occupants these always considering traffic flow patterns and minimizing obstructions these all are comes under layout optimization next uh, furniture selection the ergonomically furniture selection will be designed okay such as uh, adjustable chairs and desks helps user to maintain proper posture and reduce the risk of discomfort or injury desks with adjustable heights like standing or sitting in the work okay all these elements are used to improve ergonomic stress levels okay third one is lighting we all are know about lighting adequate adequate lighting is uh, much uh, essential for visibility and can to impact mood and productivity morely the morely natural light is uh, preferable okay so designs that maximize access to daylight while minimizing glare at shadows are beneficial artificial light, lighting can be we can adjustable it is adjustable and fourth one is ventilation and air quality also in any organization proper ventilation ensures a steady supply of fresh air and regulates temperature and humidity levels always the good indoor quality contributes to occupant health and comfort and also it improves the cognitive function noise management 
the noise management is also a very important because uh, in any organization you need to maintain peaceful environment right so for that purpose the these you know, ergonomics furniture also use a lot to manage noise these placement of sound will absorbing materials next one is accessibility the designs uh, the accessibility means the uh, it should uh, accommodate individuals with diverse needs including those with mobility impaired impairments okay and also these will provide accessible entrances pathways facilities like the restrooms workstations etc and seventh one is biophilic element what is this biophilic element means incorporating elements of nature such as plants natural materials these all are can improve and convert bad mood into a good mood and it will reduce the stress and these all things are overall increases to well being among occupants and flexibility and adaptability the space should be always designed to accommodate changing work requirements and also we need to include some technical advancements and all these are like more over uh, we can say that these all are the comfortable resources for employees to work efficiently if we give all these comforts means the employee will feel more satisfaction if the environment of the organization is good means he will work more coming to another topic another one is impact of information technology on organizing work okay how information technology is impacted the organization work okay firstly the information technology has revolutionized how work is organized in various ways it has facilitated remote work enabling enabling the fle flexible schedules improves communication collaborating through some tools like uh, email video conference like this and also this information technology provided access to vast amount of data for informing decision making and also additionally it has created and allowed for the creation of virtual teams nowadays we all are seeing no virtual interviews and increased the speed of efficiency of tasks and in simple words we can say that overall information technology has profoundly transformed the organizational landscape making it more agile adaptable and interconnected to the organization okay and firstly first one is remote work how information technology impacted we can we can take many examples are there but uh, i have gathered just a few of them there are lot of you can you can frame it as your own also if you know the concept means okay it's just an example all these six were first one is remote work the technology has mainly enabled the employees to work from anywhere now we are seeing that uh, from covid onwards we are seeing seeing that work from home before 2019 or 2018 we don't know we don't know work from home okay 
everyone needs to be go to office physically and they need to work from office only and nowadays work from home is become very trend so technology enables employees to work from anywhere and breaking the traditional boundaries of office based work okay and also these uh, flexibility moreover these flexibility improved a lot for work life balance and expands the talent of pool for organization right we are not for example you are listening the class i am not in the class but i am teaching you are listening this is also a information technology this is also a due to technology remote work this is called remote work okay and second one is communication and collaborating tools like email instant messages and video conferencing facilitated seamless communication among team members regardless of location this is more fosters collaboration even it disturbed team the distributed teams also okay we uh, in past i mean um, in olden days there is no video conferences are there okay there is no instant messages definitely everyone goes to office physically and they needs to work according to the rules of the organization and nowadays there is no problem of communication we have lot of lot of social media platforms like we have mobile phone if we has mobile phone in our home uh, in our hand means we can do anything with that we can communicate there is more lot of platforms are there to communicate uh, like email whatsapp sms telegram so there is no the technology impacted communication and collaboration a lot it make it a very easier to employee process automation it system automate repetitive tasks okay and it's also reducing manual efforts and minimizing errors workflow management tools are optimized process making them more efficient and transparent for example like uh, google and nowadays we are listening chat gpt all these are process automation these are it system automates without the helping of the humans we just we just uh, need to give inputs to process the answers and we can give inputs then it will be processed and it will give output to us no need to work out on it okay data access analysis fourth one the information technology moreover provides access to vast amount of data allowing organization to make data driven decisions analytical school uh, the sorry analytical tools that uh, help in understanding trends customer behavior market insights etc virtual teams the technology also enabled the creation of management and virtual teams composed of members from different locations and automatically it enhances the collaboration problem solving capabilities diversity also right and last one is speed and efficiency these it streamlines workflows and reduces turnaround times the tasks that once took days can now now be completed in hours or minutes improving productivity and responsiveness and in simple example overall this information technology has revolutioned how work is organizing by making it more flexible efficient data driven leading to increased competitiveness and innovation in organizations okay with here we have completed our fifth unit 
yeah what we have covered in our fifth unit all those things okay introduction to organizing concept of organizing and analyzing of work different approaches to organizing and analyzing work work improvements and measurement time and motion study ergonomics man versus machine ergonomics workspace and art architectural ergonomics impact of information technology on organizing work all these topics we were covered up to now and we have completed our fifth unit now we are going into our sixth unit sixth unit is staffing and directing which is our third and fourth functions of management now coming to the introduction to staffing and directing okay we all are know what is staffing and directing but uh, let me tell you very briefly okay the uh, the process of uh, hiring very qualified candidates for specific positions within an organization or company is known as staffing okay the staffing is also a management term that refers to recruiting the employees according to uh, uh, the skills and knowledge and then assigning them to specific job roles staffing is nothing but recruiting training developing of employees in simple words and directing means generally this directing refers to a process or technique of instructing guiding inspiring counseling and overseeing leading people towards the accomplishment of organizational goals it is a continuous managerial process that goes on throughout the life of the organization okay so now we'll discuss about functions of staffing what is the functions of staffing the first one is manpower okay what is this manpower planning means in the manpower uh, planning the first step in staffing this is the first step in staffing okay in business it figuring out the what positions are required in the type of uh, best suited to each role okay if, uh, if the there is poorly defined company structures are there it automatically leads to poorly defined job descriptions automatically it goes to no one wants to deal with a endless list of tasks there is no jo no one's job okay so we need to define company structure very properly not poorly if we are recruiting the people definitely the job description job specifications requirements everything we need to know that we need to gather lot of resumes and we need to we need to select best one among all of them lot of process is there if the basic step is good means everything will be goes on good like that okay the manpower planning is very crucial to take the time to understand your company's needs before you start looking for candidates okay well this is especially true of new businesses this process will be ongoing for the life of the company and it also evolves and changes to meet the needs of customers in the changing world okay and recruitment what is recruitment we can say it as a recruitment is the it is a pre selection process okay you can you can see these all are things in your hrm sub subject very deeply now we'll go on okay recruitment it is a pre selection process once the your companies or department staffing needs are well defined it's time to start the search for as many viable candidates as possible 
this is often done through online postings there are many job portals are there like uh, job flex staffing agencies uh, we are we all are know that uh, there are many job uh, portals are there like uh, linkedin now create apna app these all are the job portals okay we can collect uh, resumes from anywhere according to specifications right job description this is the recruitment process need to select the resumes which are suitable for our specifications and job this jd specifications and jd of the post or job which are available in our organization it is the recruitment process after recruiting what we need to do selecting okay now that you have to pool of appliances to choose from that the selection process begins okay these process usually involves going through the written applications and resumes of the candidates to find out the ones that qualify if the person is once he qualified at least on paper interviews are the natural next step obviously either on the four phone or in the person are usually conducted by the supervisor who will be in charge of eventual selection be careful not to waste time with too many rounds of interviews if the supervisor knows the position well definitely he is skilled at managing people they should be able to make the right decision he can take right the person for right position in organization another one is workforce orientation okay means orientation workforce orientation what is workforce orientation once a new recruit is brought on board it's vital that they be brought up to speed on company policies workflows and culture everything skipping these step, step can lead to a loss in production for the business and a sense of disorientation for the new employee okay never forget how daunting it is to start a new position and meet dozens of new people all in one day a well planned onboarding process can smooth smooth out this transition very easily leading to a happier employee and a more seamless integrated into company okay after that training and development a good manager knows the employee are not fox in a machine okay it does not benefit the company or the worker to assign them a job directly with no plans or future development and with no training it's obviously if that there is no training and proper development means it's obviously a loss to organization because the organization is paying salary to the person but the person don't know about job completely and he is not fruitful towards his job so the training and development is very important each position should have one or more options for additional training and skill development okay the importance of employee moral is in this regard can't be overstated people work harder and stay happier if they know they are on the path to something better okay and the organization have a responsibility to make a better path to employee even if they are satisfied with their current job also okay another one is performance appraisal manager should do, should know from the outset what metrics they will be using to determine of an employee either it is doing a good job or not these valuable metrics should also be communicated to the employee upon hiring creating and maintaining a clear set of standards for okay and compensation what is compensation unless you want to be running a training program for your competitors also you need to compensate your employee fairly 
by doing market research okay compensation is different from salary okay there will be a, some training period for every employee in that training period every organization will according to their rules and guidelines every organization can't provide salary but they need to give some compensation at least if the training period is 3 months for example they need to give some compensation 5000 or 10000 okay in training period at least so this of course will vary depending on your location while the ideal employee genuinely enjoys their job all workers need to feel like the company values them and uh, takes care of them okay they need to feel that next promotion it's a rare employee that wants to stay in one position forever okay every employee every employee waits to get promotion and to get better salary and to get it to get good position right as you implement training programs and develop the programs develop their skills also you should always keep an eye on the future definitely what career path seems right for this worker okay with promotion always in mind you can avoid the reader problem of an overqualified unhappy worker whose job has been lot okay that um, promotion will play a very crucial role in any employee's life okay and final one is the never ending process a never ending process hmm? what is never ending process the process of staffing a company is continuous employees will come and go some will be promoted and the company's needs will change over time requiring new positions to be created and others to be removed by remembering remembering the nature of these ongoing process and partnering with a staffing agencies like uh, Elegiant staffing you will be able to elevate ongoing stress and keep your workforce happy and moving forward okay and these never-ending process is the last one of functions of staffing Okay, is everyone clear? Let me know. Okay. I'm going to another topic, which is importance of uh, staffing. What are the importance of staffing? First one is efficient management of personnel. Because human resource can be very effectively managed by a system. That is recruitment, selection, placement, training, development, providing remuneration, etc. Many things are there. All these provides a motivational force to the employee. Leading to the betterment of organization as a whole. That is, this is nothing but efficient management of personnel. Okay. Second one is maximum and efficient utilization of resources. Okay, staffing plays an important role. Then it needs to be maximum and efficient utilization of resources. It needs to take because in every organization, all the resources like money, material, missions, all the 7Ms, etc. are utilized efficiently through specified manpower. And specialized manpower can only appoint in an organization, okay? Through a good staffing system. Then only we can say it as a good staffing system. Obviously, if the all the all these things are not working properly, means the staffing system fails. Okay. Thus, we can say that it helps in maximizing an efficient utilization of resource. And fourth one is, sorry, not fourth one, I think uh, third one is important managerial function. Staffing, fun uh, what is important managerial functions means? 
these managerial function is very important in staffing along with planning organizing directing and controlling uh, the functions of the functioning of these four functions depends upon the manpower which is available through staffing function right so that the staffing function is it plays a crucial role this is the main important managerial function and coming to fourth one reduces cost of production staffing also plays an important role in reducing cost also for production because the staffing always helps in appointing right person at the right job at right time so that no wastes and mistakes can be made by efficient personnel during the production of products okay hence it is clear that it assists the reducing of cost of production and another one is important is for job satisfaction we have discussed a lot of times before job satisfaction is very important to each and every employee because by means of these system jobs are allocated among the personnel according to their ability talent aptitude and specializations whatever which is giving employees more satisfaction regarding their 100% efforts behind their jobs okay so it is very important it is the one of the important and another one is for meeting present and future needs of employees and staffing is very important for a fulfill and present as well as future needs also future needs of employees because it gives a clear picture to organization that it coming year how how much positions will be vacant and new positions will be established so that organization can fulfill those vacant and new positions right by applying the reserved candidates thus it is very clear that staffing fulfills present and future needs also and last one is for maintaining coordination among the employees staffing plays a prominent role in establishing unity and coordinating among the employees because it assigns their jobs according to their ability talent aptitude specialization all these things okay and they ensure their tasks healthy and cooperative relationship among the employees so that coordination among the employees maintaining coordination among the employees is a responsibility of staffing it is very important aspects in staffing so that we have completed importance of staffing let me know anyone respond are you clear about this topic okay thank you now we'll go to the other topic which is importance of elements what are the important elements of staffing the elements of staffing means as we discussed in the first unit what are the elements of staffing the staffing first one is recruitment recruitment means pre selection process after that training and development later selection okay so these are the elements of importance of important elements of staffing in recruitment process just i said that recruitment is pre selection process uh, we have, we will gather the lot of resumes according to jd and uh, means job description and specifications uh, uh, job descriptions and specifications and also requirements according to all these uh, things we keep it in mind and uh, we'll uh, uh, choose some resumes to fill the vacant position this process is called recruitment right in this recruitment there are two functions uh, there are two sub functions are available which is external recruitment process and internal recruitment process what is external recruitment process means uh, just now i said that there are many job portals are there if for example i have one organization and i have one company or else i have one business i have 
one vacant position right i do actually i uh, there is some jd available for that vacant position okay i have posted that jd in the job portals like uh, linkedin naukri etc monster some other job portal so through these job portals i have recruited uh, sorry i have collected some resumes through these job portals i don't know whether how they will be the how the employee will be there how the people will be there how much they are uh, relevant to organization i don't know all those process is called external recruitment process okay this is a direct recruitment and what is internal recruitment process means already existing employees that who are in who are waiting for promotion in the same organization or else for say for example there is two organizations are there one is a and another one is b okay let us assume that in a organization there is a vacant position available in b organization there is no vacant position available but with the understanding and mutual understanding with the two organizations if the b in the b organization the employee is very skillful so and with the mutual consent the b organization will transfer the skillful employee to the this a organization this is nothing but transfer uh, the process is going internal only this is completely internal process they are not recruiting any person from the outside right so this is completely internal process and also promotion we are we all are know that just now i have said that uh, we have one employee he is waiting for promotion since uh, far back onwards so we have vacant position it's a higher position than he is working we know all, we know all about the that particular employee we know his behavior his behavior is good his skills are good he is working a lot for organization he is always meets our goals and uh, objectives in organization he is the best employee so what we'll do definitely we'll promote the employee for the vacant position this is this ha this po the all these things will happens in the internal recruitment process so coming to this after in internal recruitment after this recruitment after we, uh, in this recruitment we have gathered all the resumes later selection process interview will be done okay interview done and we have selected one candidate after that we needs to give training and development for that particular employee we have say for example we have recruited the person from external external recruitment process through through naukri okay naukri.com we need to give some training and development in those training and development there are two types are there on the job and off the job okay on the job means like uh, physical training of the job means virtual training okay is a uh, did you understand about importance of elements is everyone clear let me know okay now the another topic is methods of training and development there are two methods in training and development one is on the job training methods and the another one is off the job training methods in the on the job training method first one is job rotation what is job rotation okay for example i am the employee i have selected for one job vacancy role now i am getting training in those training on the on the job training job rotation job rotation is assigned for me what is job rotation means the employee will give different types of roles in the 
entire organization in uh, HR management uh, and in HR department, operational department, production department. They used to give different types of roles. They will rotate the jobs. It's, it is also a first method of training in on the job. And second one is coaching means in coaching, they will assign one supervisor. The supervisor is the coach for all the training 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 employees. Okay, he is the trainee. He will teach the everything about organization. Okay, and another one is job instruction. The coach will give some instructions to the people. I mean, to the employees. And make them to train according to those instructions only. Committee assignments means committee means group of people assigning together and giving some problems that which are occurred in the organization and make them to solve them. If the of the trainees, uh, the, if the people who are tra taking training, if they solve problem means they they will analyze and calculate the decision making of that particular people okay so the training assignments uh, committee assignment is the one of the training program in on the job training and another one is in internship training we all are know about internship they will assign particular job in one organization for some tenure like 45 days three months etc the employee will do that job specific job for some duration and he will get expertise this is nothing but internship training of the job training what is of the job training case studies they will give some case studies means they will they will give some problems in the written paper and try to them solve they will uh, they will tell to them solve them they will solve this is the one training method. Another one is incident method. Incident method means whatever the incident happens in the organization previously, reality, okay. Those real incident is explained to people and ask them to take a decision at that time. It is also a one training method. Next role play, giving one role like HR make them to play that role next is in basket method what is in basket method means it is a imaginary world for example there is 10 people are taking training they will tell those 10, 10 people to this is the you imagine that this is the organization and they will tell all the situations and uh, make them to act their employees in the organization. This is a, one of the training method. And another one is business games. Means they will divide the team into a two departments, two department businesses, the two departments, and uh, they will make coordinating among with them. Okay. They will improve the coordinating among them by through these business games. And also lecturers, grid, grid training. Grid, grid training is also a one type of typical training. They will assign some problems and make them to solve. Lectures means they will teach some training. In training, they will teach some rules, guidelines regarding organization, everything. Same as simulation. Okay, management education. They will educate the rules within the organization and management. And conferences meet conference meetings like uh, group discussions, etc. All these things are under methods of training. Everyone clear? Anyone text me in the chat box so that I can continue to next class okay thank you kishore das okay and we'll go to the another topic which is features of directing 
what are the features of directing we all are know that the process of instructing guiding counseling motivating leading people in the organization to achieve the organization goals are known as directing right in that particular directing there are some features or characteristics are there let us know them okay first one is directing initiate act initiate actions first one here okay left side di direct here start okay directing the initiate actions this is the other actually the directing is the fourth function of organize management right this happens this directing will done after planning organizing staffing okay and it creates conditions for managers to take appropriate actions whereas directing functions in each initiates according in an organization and it converts plans into action and the directing is the main key managerial function performed by the managers so we can say it as in directing is a initiate action directing will initiate actions and directing is a pervasive yes definitely the directing is a pervasive because as it takes place at every level of management right there are different we have discussed that there is three levels of management on the top middle and lower levels of management in all these levels of management definitely there will be a hand of directing without directing there is no these these levels are been managed so it takes place wherever superior subordinate relations exist every manager has to subordinate who works under him okay and he is responsible for getting things done by their team or subordinates so the directing is pervasive and third one directing is a continuous process yes definitely a directing is a distinct process why directing is an ongoing activity it takes place throughout the life of an organization okay and in respect of the people in the organization managers gives orders to their subordinates and motivate them and guide them on a continuous basis so that directing is a continuous process and coming to fourth one flows from top to bottom directing will flows from top to bottom s yes. the directing will flows from up to down and down to up everything but uh, the information will pass from down to a uh, uh, sorry top to down and down to up but direction will flows from only top to bottom okay because it takes place whether the superior subordinate relations exists who works under him and he is responsible for getting things done okay and also it is uh, it makes a through rough rough diagram uh, not a rough but it will implements the organizational hierarchy in directing every manager directs his subordinates and takes instructions from his immediate boss okay it is a function of a superior why why because that is the superior motivates guides supervises his subordinate to achieve the automatically autom uh, organizational goals for that purpose organizational flows from top to bottom only superior can rule the subordinate but subordinate cannot rule the superior okay and final one deals with people yes directors deals with people because it is concerned with the director direction of human efforts towards organizational goals right it can be said that directing is a delegate function as it deals with the people and also with the human behavior so the directing is a always complex more complex and highly unpredictable 
okay so that we have finished the features of directing we'll go to another topic which is elements of directing so what are the elements basically what is this for already i have said uh, elements of direction in the first unit okay then i will be i will tell now also directing is defined as a management function right and it provides the guidance of direction to the employees of the organization which enables them to perform efficiently and effectively so there are some elements are there in directing which is communication supervision motivation and leadership first one is communication the communication is one of the basic function of the management it is the process of which a piece of information is transferred from one person to another in an organization the person the person in the organization who conveys the information is known as the sender and who receives the information is known as the receiver okay the one whom the information is conveyed is known also you known as received receiver the purpose of communication is organization is to send across any set of instructions or orders or information related to the improvements or operation due of uh, about operational efficiencies definitely the communication is essential for conveying the state of performance of the employees and ways to improve them proper communication occurs when subordinates understand what was conveyed to them by the supervisor and act accordingly okay whereas some miscommunications will happen if the miscommunication is occurs when the information conveyed is not clear or understandable leading to misunderstand it is all automatically leads to loss of performance okay definitely the communication should be always two sided where the flow of information is from supervisor to subordinates and vice versa supervisor next one supervisor is the supervision supervision is the next step after information okay we have conveyed information by the whom by whom by the supervisor to the employee okay regarding the work that needs to be done in the organization this is the stage where the supervisor oversees if the subordinates are following what has been instructed or not the supervision definitely has to the supervise to supervision these definitely he is following up the instructions or not like that okay managers acts as supervisors and also make sure that the work is going as per their instructions it is the duty of the supervisor okay either the subordinates all are doing well or not like that okay so that directing is super uh, the supervision is one of the element in directing okay and later motivation everybody we all are know that motivation is very important to any employee by motivating employee we can get our things done to meet organizational goals okay so it is the key element definitely we needs to motivate employee through promotions or salary hiking or to motivating them encouraging them in every situations encouraging their ideas etc so last one is leadership as we all are know that being being a good leader the manager must needs to be like a good leader if the subordinate gets any problem definitely they may feel very initiate to to ask to manager the manager has to play the role of leader the more the employees need to motivate by their manager leadership qualities okay
So next topic is principle of directing, principles of directing. First one is maximum individual contribution. According to these principles, such a technique of directing should be used with encouraging worker to work efficiently. Okay. In this principle, uh, directing will, sorry, here we need to encourage workers to get more efficient work. Okay. And also best of their capabilities such as uh, like uh, financial uh, such as like they need to contribute the maximum towards the common goals of organization for example like uh, various financial and non-financial incentives can be given to encourage workers okay this is the maximum individual contribution to workers next one is harmony of objectives Often it is seen that uh, the personal goals of an employee are not in sync with the overall organizational goals. In such situations, the focus of directing function should be the thing among convergence between the two. For example, while an employee may wish to increase earnings right, and goals of the organization, maybe the increase of production. In such cases, the directing techniques can use to encourage workers to work harder for, incre uh, for increasing of product so that they are able to earn better. Okay. And third one is unity of command. According to these principles, Employee should receive instructions or order from only one superior. The boss, as I already I have said in 14 principles, unity of command means the boss should be only one. But the boss can have different subordinates and multiple subordinates. But for a subordinate, the superior should be only one, not more than one. So that there is no, the deviations does not takes place there. For that purpose, unity of principle is one of the principle in directing also. Okay. Fourth one is appropriateness of direction technique. According to these principles, the manager must appropriately select the motivational and directional technique. That is according to the needs, desires, and attitudes of workers. Each and every worker has desires, needs, everything. The manager has to use different techniques to work for different employees. For example, like, uh, well, one employee might desire financial incentive, okay? Some other employee might get satisfaction with price from the superior like that the the direct uh, the manager must uh, need to find the desired and accurate need of the employee fifth one is managerial communication manager the communication between the free communication the free flow of communication is very important between manager and subordinate Maintaining a free flow of communication is a also a principle because this this is very important. So, use of informal organizations means realize and identify the informal groups in the in the organization. Such informal organization can be used strategically. Why? For advantage of organization. Okay. For example, like um, informal communication can be used to bring forward the real thinking of employees with regard to policy change. So that the use of informal organization is very important principle in directing. Leadership, as we discussed just now. 
the manager must be able to bring out best in his team employees he must be able to motivate and encourage workers to work towards the organizational goals he must be able to work on the individual goals of employees etc and follow through commands follow through means some orders or commands to be subordinates but should also ensure that the instructions are followed and implemented properly okay is everyone clear hope that everyone clear so that i am so with here we have completed our six units okay in this unit we have covered the in, we have covered all these things introduction to staffing and directing functions of staffing important elements of staffing importance of staffing and methods of training and development features of directing features also we can say it as characteristics elements of directing and principles of directing now we'll go to the seventh unit which is controlling okay controlling is the fifth function of management right so what is controlling generally the controlling is a primary goal oriented function of management in organization and this is the process of comparing the actual performance with the set standards of the company right why why to ensure that activities are performed according to the plans or not if there is any action requirements to need to correct you that action the controlling is performing okay so here we will see the importance of controlling generally the controlling will identify the areas of weaknesses okay errors why what should the what the controlling is doing means if any particular area there is they need any alterations hmm they identifying that particular area they identifying the weakness areas or errors they rectifying that and preventing and mo or modifying new ideas or they are making that particular weakness areas to strong areas this is the first importance of controlling and these will this controlling will also it deviates for example according to our company standards the action is going on but the actual performance is somewhat deviating from actual standards from the organization actual standards of the organization then what this control will do at that time say for example the actual performance is going to left side but real standard of organization is right side these controlling will make that actual performance to turn to right side okay these controlling will deviate the wrong route to right route and these will gear up the all departments uh, it stimulates action it's stimulating the action through turning up uh, to right side and also this controlling is very important function it will makes a manager to take clear cut decisions we all are know that planning means looking forward and controlling means we looks backward why because we have already planned and organized later we have staffing directing later this controlling means all these uh, the functions which are before controlling is evaluated properly or not executed properly or not all these things are controlled by this 
controlling function okay it is very well designed to ensure the good and better results okay so now we'll go to the another topic which is the control pro the control process what is the control process the control process means as just now i have said that in the controlling first step is setting up some standards some performance standards to the work and in second step we are measuring that actual performance to the standardized some standards which are perform setting which are setted for that organization or the company the measuring actual performance comparing the actual performance with standards okay later analyzing deviations if there is any deviations are occurred in the plan then will rectify and taking into the correct action in simple we can say it. okay in the feet the controlling is the circular process managing function begins with like planning and ends with controlling hence it is helps the manager to identify a deviation from the plan compelling the activities to take place with no deviations as per plan okay and also it will rectify the deviations or errors anything if once if once uh, the controlling has analyzed the deviation and determined the manager will have to set up a plan in which uh, corrective measures are point control and other means are used to resolve the issue this is to reduce the deviation and ensure the standard is met or not entire these processes in just five steps first one is we all are know that uh, they are uh, setting up some performance uh, standards measuring the actual performance we have many measuring techniques as we discussed Uh, through those techniques we are measuring actual performance comparing actual performance to standards and uh, uh, if there is any deviation occurs in these states we will know the deviation is occurred or not later we'll take uh, we'll recorrect or uh, we'll taking